hello lovelies, it is about this time of year, you've been doing your GCSE and your A-level mocks and you're going to get those results back and you're going to look at your mock results, you're going to look at your predicted grades and what you actually want to get out in your GCSE and A-level exams at the end, what you need to get to move on to the next course in life and sometimes the predicted grades can be a bit confusing, they can be a bit disheartening if you haven't got your predicted grades or they can be really confusing if you've got way above your predicted grades. So, I just want to take a little bit of time today to talk to you about how predicted grades are set. Now, there are slightly different processes for GCSE and A-level, obviously, but the overall trend is the same. And obviously, some schools will do things a little bit differently, but the majority of the data for GCSE is sat on the year six sats. So, do you remember at the end of primary school when you did some tests in English and some maths and that's is what got fed through to the secondary schools, that got went through to your school in year seven. That is what, well that is one of the key bits of data that they use to determine how you're going to do in your GCSEs. For A-level it's a similar process but they use your GCSE scores to predict how well you're going to do at A-level. Now I'm sure you can see there's a little bit of a problem with this. Schools need to be able to predict stuff and they need to have standardised tests to do that and the best thing they have at the moment is the year six SATs and this is what they've been told to do by the government so it's not your school's fault that this is what they do. Some of them will obviously do kind of like some extra testing when you got into year seven, maybe you went straight into sets when you were in year seven and obviously you do extra tests along the way which will change your predicted grade but loads of it is based on this key stage two SATs data and what they do is they feed it into a big computer and it maps everybody and it says this is what people are going to get at GCSE and then the exam boards look at a similar graph as well. Now I'm sure you can see the problems with this because lots of things happen between year 6 and year 11 and year 13 when you sit those exams and how well you do based at year 13 or what set you end up in in year 11 is going to be affected by what happened in year six but there's a lot of time in between those two points people have come into your life people have gone out of your life things have changed a lot all of which will feed into affecting how well you do in the exams and the data for your predicted grade doesn't really address that in any way chances are when you go into year seven the schools already had your predicted grade for GCSE sitting there on the computer. They may have told you, they may not have told you. But if you're in a position at the moment where your predicted grade is vastly different to your mock grade and is vastly different to the grade that you want to get out at the end, please remember that your predicted grade is a statistic. It doesn't necessarily say anything about you now as you are as a person. It was based on something that happened five years ago and a lot has changed for you since then. So don't let your predicted grade be like disheartening if it's too low. If your predicted grade is way higher than what you actually need to get on to your next course in life, you want you to go into a college course or your A-level course, if your predicted grade is much higher than your mock grade, please give yourself a bit of grace because a lot of stuff has happened between when it was predicted and now. Lots of things have happened to you since that grade was predicted and where we are now. I'm sure there have been lots of ups and downs in your life. There's been a massive pandemic, let's not forget that. So if your predicted grade is way higher than you think you're actually going to get in the exam, that doesn't mean you're a failure, it just means you don't fit in to the statistical analysis exactly where that you said you should and that's because you're a human being and that's okay. A level your predicted grades are based on your GCSE grades obviously and then a little bit of extra testing you might have done some cat tests or heard about Alice scores but there is lots and lots of graphs and data out there which can because it's pretty close year 11 year 13 map what you got at GCSE to what you got at A level. Now obviously it's going to vary by subject some of the subjects you did for A level you might not have a GCSE in but if you are 9 at GCSE, the most likely grade you're going to get is an A. If you are an 8 at GCSE, it's really, really close between whether you're going to get an A, B or a C at A level. If you've got a 7 at GCSE, then the stats say we're looking at a C or a D at A level. If you've got a 6 at GCSE, then chances are you're coming out with a D or an E at A level. And then anyone that's got into an A level course with 5 or below, well, there actually aren't very many of you out there. But the same with the GCSE data and the key stage 2 and the GCSE data. 
These are all statistics. They don't accurately represent what happens in your life, how hard you try. There have been cases of students who got a two in GCSE maths and then went on to get an A star when they did that A level. So just because a statistic tells you something doesn't mean that is actually what is going to happen. Statistics cannot determine how hard you work. Statistics cannot determine your attitude. Statistics cannot determine how much effort you put in, how much practice you put in. So that is how projected grades are set. I really want to give you the information so you can see the predicted grades are not a definite determination of what is going to happen in the future. So sometimes they can be motivating, sometimes they can be demotivating. Um, but I really hope that being informed makes you feel a little bit better. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. Thank you.